Bertolin Rubinstein was born in 1910 in a small town in Transylvania, which up through World War I was part of the Austria-Hungarian Empire. He was the second youngest of 12 children. His mother died when he was only seven years old, so he was raised thereafter by his father and older siblings. Bert was always a good athlete. When he was 13, he was captain of his town soccer team, which would travel around the region playing teams from other towns. But times were very difficult in Europe, and the worldwide depression and the spread of anti-Semitism led him to immigrate to Canada in the early 30s. After a short stay in Toronto, Bert moved to Windsor, where he took any odd job he could find at a time when making enough money to eat regularly was a challenge. When a gas station owner dreamed up a scheme to attract business by hiring fit young men to grapple with each other in a boxing ring that's set up next to the gas pumps, Bert soon became one of the star attractions. A fight promoter saw him, recognized his potential, and recruited him to become a professional wrestler. Soon he was making $100 a week, a lot of money in those days, and a career was born. In 1935, when he was 25, Bert married 19-year-old Irene Fader, a nice Jewish girl from Detroit, and together they traveled the country as Bert's pro wrestling career continued to grow. They moved frequently from Detroit, Tulsa, to Chicago, to Dayton, to New York. Wherever Bert got a series of bookings, Bert and Irene would move. Known as the man with the educated toes because he always wrestled barefoot, Bert once held the title of the world's light heavyweight wrestling champion. In 1945, when oldest son Alan was born, the Rubies finally settled down permanently in Detroit. Son Rob was born in 1949. Bert, ever the entrepreneur, became Detroit's wrestling promoter while continuing his career as the area's most popular good guy. When television became popular in the early 50s, TV stations needed programming and wrestling shows were easy, relatively low-cost productions. Bert, who could perform any number of high-flying aerial moves, saw his popularity grow to new heights and his TV show, Motor City Wrestling, was a staple weekly offering on Detroit's Channel 7. In 1955, Burt suffered a severe heart attack and his wrestling career was over, but he continued his role as promoter. By now, wrestling had become a family business with Irene acting as bookkeeper and editor of the Wrestling News and sons Alan and Rob helping out as ring announcers. At this time, much of Burt's focus shifted to staging professional wrestling shows in small communities as fundraisers for local service organizations, schools, and police and fire departments. Literally hundreds of PTAs, school band and athletic boosters, Lions Clubs, Rotary Clubs, and community support groups throughout the state raised significant funds by bringing all-star wrestling to town. To wrestling fans, the names of Burt's stable of stars is legendary. Leaping Larry Shane, Ricky the Crusher Cortez, Killer Kowalski, Midget Sky Low Low, Little Beaver, and Fuzzy Cupid. Perhaps his most famous protege was a high school teacher and football coach who wrestled as the student, a masked wild man who in another incarnation became WWE Hall of Famer, George the Animal Steel. Burt died of another heart attack in 1968 at the age of 57. Tonight, one last time, we are proud to introduce, in this corner, Burt Ruby, as he inducted into the Michigan Jewish Sports Hall of Fame.